So you're thinking about moving to Las Vegas, Nevada? In this video, we're gonna go in depth on Centennial Hills, the northwest part of Las Vegas, to talk about all the pros and the cons of living there. So let's get after it right now. first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is about pulling up stakes and moving to Las Vegas, Nevada, then this is the channel for you. Just hit subscribe, tap that bell for notifications and you'll be the first in the know for everything that's happening here in the Las Vegas, Nevada area market. Hi, my name's Anthony and my team and I get phone calls, texts and emails from people just like you every day who are looking to move to Nevada and we absolutely love it. Look, if you're thinking about making the move to Las Vegas in the next 9 to 90 days, go ahead and shoot us a text, give us a call, or send us an email, and we would be happy to help you uh, make that move as smooth as possible. So today, what we're going to talk about is the northwest part of Las Vegas in the Centennial Hills area. Fantastic, new, up and growing area of development here in Las Vegas, and there's a lot of great reasons to live there and a couple not so great reasons. So let's go through and figure them all out. First of all, Centennial Hills. Centennial Hills wasn't known as Centennial Hills until about 2005 or so. Uh, before that, it was just Northwest Las Vegas. And to be honest, I've been here and with roots in the Las Vegas area since 1981. That Northwest area of Las Vegas was what we considered the boonies. There was nothing there. It was simply uh, on the route of the 95 on your way to Mount Charleston or some of the other locations uh, up to Northern Nevada. But really there wasn't much out there. Then around the early 2000s, population growth here in Nevada and Las Vegas started exploding. And that area, that Northwest area, uh, became the last big place to develop here in Las Vegas. And it has become a fantastic place to move. There is so much development there now, and there is so much new building, new construction, that it's just a fantastic place to go. So, Let's talk about some of the pros of moving to Centennial Hills here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, now my number one pro, and I say this on every one of my pros and cons videos, is that moving to Nevada, you pay zero state income tax. That's right, you don't pay any state income tax to the government. In fact, what I'd like to do is I'd like to thank you if you've ever come here as a tourist because, because of you coming here and the 42 million people a year who come here and enjoy all that Las Vegas has to offer, the gaming, the shows, the resorts, because of your tourist dollars, you are able to support the fact that our citizens here, our state uh, citizens, pay zero in state income taxes. So thank you. Now, if you want to take advantage of that and stop paying your government, whether it's California, New York, Illinois, or, or any of the other states where we get so many people moving here because the taxes are so great. I mean, look, let's just take California, for example. The top state income tax rate there is between 10 and 14%. If you simply were able to move out of California and into Las Vegas, which is a fantastic place to move, into Las Vegas and you make the same money that you were making before, you immediately, because you're not paying Gavin Newsom and the California state uh, income tax, you get a 10 to 14% income raise right immediately. It is one of the best reasons to move here, not to mention all the other great things that Las Vegas and Nevada in general have to offer, but it is one of the primary movers. You just can't beat the economics for living in Las Vegas and Nevada in general. So let's move on to our second big pro of moving to Centennial Hills in particular. So Centennial Hills, as I was saying at the beginning, is one of the newest areas of development. It used to be the boonies. Now it is one of the hottest places to live here. There is so much new construction. 
all of the houses were for the most part built from the early 2000s through now and there's still a lot of land to be developed there so let's move on to our third pro our third pro, and I touched on this a little bit earlier, is your budget actually goes a little bit farther here in Centennial Hills. Now you get a little bit more house for your money. Your per square foot price is a little bit better than in a place like Southeast in Henderson, the new construction there. And it's actually a lot better than even some of the other more established areas or a Summerlin. You just get a little bit more square footage for the same amount of dollar. And that's because there is a lot of new construction there. There's still a lot of development going on there. There's more competition or there's more availability. Even though this is still a very hot market, uh, competition is strong. There is, because there is so much more new construction there, you do find that your dollar does go a little bit farther. Another fantastic reason to move to Centennial Hills. So let's move on to our next one. Now, our next pro with that kind of goes along the same vein, is that all of the infrastructure in Centennial Hills is new. That means the hospital, Centennial Hills Hospital, I believe was in 2007 that it opened. It is a fantastic state-of-the-art uh, hospital, and it's what really anchored in the Centennial Hills area. Um, and everything kind of grew from outside of that area. But that Centennial Hills area, all of the infrastructure is new. Now, I owned a home in uh, Centennial Hills in the, about 2010. And let me tell you, even in 2010, when it had been developed for, I don't know, five to eight to 10 years, the infrastructure was still a little rough. We were still getting going there. Things were still getting put in place. But now, and I'm making this video in 2022, now the infrastructure is top notch. The rows are primarily new. Um, all of the shopping is primarily new. Um, the stores are just beautiful. So all of the, the things that you would want in the newest version of what you're used to is located in Centennial Hills. It's fantastic and a great place to move. And one of the things, like I said, new, new, if you want new, new, this is the place to go, go. All right, so let's move on to our next one. And our fifth and final pro for Centennial Hills is that you are so close to the recreation. There's a couple really cool places. Okay, as I said, it's in the northwest part of Las Vegas. Now before, the, the 95, which is one of our uh, highways, crosses through this the northwest part here. And the 95 used to be your route to two major things. It would be the route to Reno, or it would be the route to Mount Charleston. Mount Charleston, you are as close as you can get to Mount Charleston, which is amazing. Look, Mount Charleston is a year round resort. In the spring, summer, and fall, you've got amazing hiking. In the summer, it's almost 30 degrees less on average in Mount Charleston than it is in the Las Vegas Valley. So if you wanna go escape the heat, it is a fantastic place to go. It's a great big forest, fantastic. The hikes there are amazing. There's Mary Jane Falls, which is, it's a tough hike, but it's a great hike. And when you get up to the falls and they're running, it's a lot of fun. Hey, I take my daughter and my wife, we go there several times a year because it is such a fun hike. Then during the winter time, if you wanna go sledding, you wanna go play in the snow, it does snow there and it, the snow stays for a long time. In fact, it snows so much, we have our own ski resort. So if skiing is your thing, you're less than 40 minutes away, uh, assuming the roads are good. You're less than 40 minutes away from being able to make it to the slopes if you live in Centennial Hills. You cannot beat it. Additionally, if you wanna go hiking or checking out the views in Red Rock, not a problem either. It's a 15 minute drive on the 215, one of the newest uh, freeways, it's the Beltway to get from Centennial Hills to Charleston, which is where downtown Summerlin is. And that will take you, uh, you make a right instead of a left and you can go right to Red Rock Canyon and you can have a fantastic day of hiking, seeing some natural wonders, doing some great things. There's also right in Centennial Hills, two really cool things. If you saw my vlog video from Centennial Hills, 
go check it out. We went to Floyd Lamb Park. That's where I started. Floyd Lamb Park is amazing. And it's part of the Thule Springs area of Centennial Hills. Now, Floyd Lamb Park was an old ranch and they had uh, crops and they did agriculture there as well as livestock, but they've turned it now into a park. There's a lake on there that they stock. Uh, you can actually go fishing as long as you have a Nevada fishing license. You can go fishing in the lake. There's peacocks. My daughter absolutely flips over the peacocks. They just walk around wild and when it's time, they show all their feathers. It is so much fun. It's a great place to go from spring through the late fall. You can go out there, have a picnic, just spend some time outdoors, even though you're less than 15 minutes from the strip. Amazing place. Now, if you're a paleontologist or a dinosaur hunter, right next to it, just down the street, is the Thule Springs Fossil Area. It's not a national park, but it's, it's the Thule Springs Fossil uh, Preserve. So you go there, you can look at fossils that have been saved for millions of years right here at the tip of Las Vegas in Nevada. It's literally within Centennial Hills. It is a lot of fun and just one of those really cool things that you can do. And then if you wanna to go to the lake and you wanna go boating, you wanna to go to Hoover Dam, you wanna go do all of those things, you are literally less than an hour and a short, easy freeway ride away from getting to Lake Mead. Look. If you want outdoor recreation, we have outdoor recreation. It's not just casinos, it's not just rogues. We have a lot going on here that people don't even realize, but there is so much to do. You are not going to miss your nature if you come and live here in Las Vegas. It's fantastic. But there are a couple cons to living in the Centennial Hills area. So let's talk about them. Number one, is that it is the northwest corner of the Las Vegas area. It is the very edge. So you're not as close to the strip as say if you lived in a Spring Valley or one of the other interior suburbs or a Summerlin, you're not as close to the strip. That being said, you're less than 15, 20 minutes away at the most from getting there. Um, Look, as I've shown in a lot of my map videos, Las Vegas is very small. Las Vegas is only uh, north to south, it's only about 28 miles, and east to west, it's between 26 and 28 miles as its widest point. Mostly it's about 21 miles. You can get anywhere in the Las Vegas area in under a half hour for the most part. The other thing we have is great freeway systems. So even though you're, you're up there and it is the edge of where all the building is, you are a little bit farther than if you were in the middle. Not a problem. We have great freeways, great transportation system here throughout the Las Vegas area. You won't have a problem getting exactly where you wanna go in a short amount of time with a lot less hassle than I'm sure from where you're coming from. So let's look at the next con. The next con is that because it is the last bastion of development, this Northwest area, the Centennial Hills area, what you'll find is that prior to the developers coming in, you had a lot of homes that were on a uh, piece of land and then there would be a lot of area around them. And then down the road a little bit, there'd be another home and you'd have a lot of land around it and they'd be two different styles. So you didn't have that homogenous uh, feel that you would have in like, let's take a Summerlin or an Anthem Highlands or one of the master planned communities. That is changing quite a bit. So here's how the development is going in the Northwest area. So you have two development uh, strategies going on there. You have a couple of big master planned areas. So these are big swaths of land and they, they put in multiple developments that entire set of multiple developments follows a, a master plan. So everything is somewhat homogenized. Everything fits. It looks like it fits. And you don't have a house here, a house there, a house there. Everything looks like it's a cohesive unit and it's all part of one thing. The, the point of that is 
keeps property values up, it keeps property values rising, it provides amenities that you wouldn't get otherwise. So there's a, a couple of those master plan communities. Then your second way of doing it, and the way that a lot of developers have done it, and you still find, especially in this Northwest area, is that you find pockets of singular developments. So a developer will go in and they'll buy, let's say uh, one block, a city block area of land. They'll buy the house that was on there or the couple houses that were on there and all the land. They'll go ahead and knock it all down, subdivide it and turn it into 20, 50, 100 houses. A lot of times they'll put up gates, they'll fence it and they'll do all of that and it will create a little mini community um, within there. Great developments, great builders, but they didn't have to buy, you know, 10,000 acres, they bought 100 acres um, and were able to profitably build a nice community. There are a lot of those in the Centennial Hills area. They're fantastic. Most of them all have their own HOA, which means that you still get some of the aspects of a master plan community in the fact that you know all the neighbors in your development are going to be following the same rules. Your property values aren't going to get uh, sunk by the one neighbor who just happens to let the house go um, or does something crazy, knocks it down and puts up a TP or something like that because it's not permitted. Um, so, so that's the other thing. In general, this isn't a Summerlin for the most part, where you have you know a, an entire section of the city that is somewhat homogenized. There's also a lot of areas that are yet to be fully developed. So you will see a development, and then you'll see some empty land that is going to be built on. There's no doubt about that. It's just a question of when it's going to be built. And in most cases, it's not by a single house you're going to have another developer who's going to come in and once they sell out where they're currently selling they're going to put in another development another uh, smaller homogenized development not i mean it's a con um if you're looking for everything looking the same not a horrible con just something to be aware of one of the things that you want to think about but like i said as the new development comes first of all you're getting great value a lot of these have more space than other areas in the valley. They So your dollar goes further, you get a little bit more land. It's just, there's nice areas. The development that you choose is also gonna be very similar to the style that you're choosing. Rest assured that everything is probably gonna stay similar and your property values don't have that that chance of just really taking a tank because a guy starts a pig farm next to you. Just not going to happen the same way. So let's move on to our last con. And the last con is just, it's a con that we hear from a lot of people who haven't moved here um, and haven't spent a lot of time here. And that is the heat. Look, it does get hot here in Las Vegas. I'm not going to lie. The cool part, if you live in Centennial Hills, is that you are less than 40 miles away from outdoor recreation that is 30 degrees cooler than here in Las Vegas. It's 110 here, it's 75 on Mount Charleston. And you are as close as you can get. Lucky for you, if you live in Centennial, you get to go to Mount Charleston easier than anybody else. So Centennial Hills, northwestern part of Las Vegas, fantastic area, up and coming. I think it's amazing. And I think you would think it's amazing too. It checks off so many of the boxes that people are looking for when they move here. Because they are new construction, a lot of them, newer construction, if not brand new, you have a lot of options that you don't have in the older homes. All the new technology, all the new energy saving uh, stuff is in place there. The builders, we have really good builders here in Las Vegas. They're very fast, 
They're very quality and they're very good. We can set you up in exactly what you're looking for, give you a long run to call home and make your home for a good period of time. It's a great place to plant roots and I think you'd absolutely love it. And in fact, if you want to know anything more about moving to Centennial Hills or you have an idea about moving to Las Vegas and want to know what the best place is, just shoot us a text, give us a call, send us an email. Be more than happy to help you. Centennial Hills definitely gets a two thumbs up from me. I'd love to show you more. And if I don't uh, hear from you soon, I'll see you on the next video, or maybe I'll see you here in Las Vegas calling you neighbor. Take care. <laughs>